fear. Humph. It's going. Hi, welcome to Business Law. I'm Paul Sugden. And, and I'm Andrew Coleman. And what we're going to do is why study law and business? Why do we study law and business? Yeah, I'm an accountant. Do I need to know about law? No. I just need to know about figures. Don't bust my balls over this. Thank you we much. will enlighten you because things can go horribly wrong, as we will see in this short video. Uh, then. Oh, oh and now need to step out let's have shot. a look at these statistics because looking at these statistics, Enron was one of the best performing companies and it went bust in 2001. It was literally one of the biggest corporate collapses until the collapse in 2008. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is that Enron's fault? What did they do wrong? They just simply, it's bad. This is the economy. It's nothing to do with uh, war. Why is it got, what's the uh, creative Please accounting. Explain. Creative accounting. Spurious accounting that basically inflated the value of the company and gave an advance value compared to what it actually was. Broke a whole pile of accounting rules, not let's mention legal. So it was Enron or was there accountants? Uh, was their it? accountants uh, were in on the act. Uh, Arthur Anderson, uh, okay. as we will see now in this short one. Can accountants make it snow? Ooh, I don't and say a any short snow. video just to entertain you. Where's the snowman? Now, as you can see, the failure to consider the legal consequences, you're just trying to look slim. <laughs> Ain't working. <laughs> the the, the mm. consequences to look about this is the failure of the legal consequences caused the collapse of a... Whoa, whoa, whoa. They failed to consider legal consequences when doing their accounting. Mm. So what, they just didn't follow accounting standards? What was they the problem? They didn't follow a c correct accounting principles. Right. And then and they did they what? Were, they were basically overvaluing their assets and they were saying that it was worth something on the basis of what would happen in the future, but then putting it down as the current value. So, so they're putting a right, future right, right, value right. as a current value. So then what was the bit about the snow? They were actually shredding ah, documents. Ah, now this is the bit. They got tricky and suddenly realised that the only way to get rid of the evidence was to shred the documents. Okay, so that's what they did. Not only did there were legal consequences by Enron, in the sense of how they managed the company and allowed their um, accountants to, to basically Behave. fraudulently cook the books or, yes. or whatever. And then when they were caught out, the second legal mistake, or if you like, is that they then shredded the documents, tried to destroy evidence so that they couldn't yep. get caught. They got caught, and as a consequence of that. Arthur Anderson went from being a company that turned over 9.336 billion, is that right? To basically yes. having virtually no assets, nothing. And kafunked. Wow. So a hundred and whatever year old firm, kaput. Wow. So they didn't follow best practices. No. But can Their it only happen to accountants? Wow. Is it only about accountants? What about marketers? This is pretty cool. I like this ad. Uh, this is a great ad. So Arthur, so Arthur Anderson's done the wrong thing, shredding documents, and here is this phone company trying to take advantage of their misfortune. Mm. What's the ad say? The secretary heard... Sorry. The partner rang and said, ship, ship the Enron documents. And what did he... To the feds. Yep. And his secretary said... Rip. Oh, sorry, heard. heard. Rip the Enron documents. It's okay, that's classy. That's classy. That's good. And that's it's handling. all about yeah, bad cellular. Wow. So can we can we make or take advantage of someone else's misfortune? Well that's what marketing's all add. about, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it sort of yeah, you well, know, well, we, know we all know that marketers um, marketers sort of lie. Exagger I wasn't gonna say that I was gonna say exaggerate. Yeah. Or take well, you know it's just yeah. making making fun out of but you know, but yeah. it brings up a serious thing that look Which at is? the that there are big Ooh. decisions. Oh, okay. Big decisions, double click, can have big consequences and damn big ramifications. Not just did it cause Enron to collapse, but it also caused Arthur Anderson to collapse. And the run-on effect was that it caused um, life insurance 
and superannuation firms to go belly up because they'd invested in for, in the shares in Enron. So, that, so that's a huge consequence for the society as a whole, rather than just the employees or just the clients of those two um, entities. You have. Um, companies like a superannuation fund who is basically investing for pensioners, investing for, say, even um, people who are being employed. So the people that are going to look forward to retirement, as well as retirees, have now lost money simply because the decision-making process in Enron and the decision-making process in Arthur Anderson and the failed to... And decision-making process in their lawyers. Yep, failed, failed to take, to take into account... account. The legal consequences for their actions. Wow, yeah. so That's pretty funny. However, let's have a look at our last little bit. However, however, however God, yeah, is it just them? Do you drink coffee? I Andrew? drink ten cups of coffee a day. Um, probably Venus yeah, in the I, morning. It's just like get it down there. Yeah. <laughs> Wake. Well, I drink a lot of coffee. I, I love coffee. Story yeah, I do. Yeah. For you. Wow, look, I like premium coffee. I like good coffee. Ah, then you're a McDonald's candidate. Yep, I'm ah. loving it. I'm loving it. I love and, my coffee. Well, let's have a chat about Stella. Mm. Stella. Stella. Stella Liebeck. Yeah, what she about Stella? She went to McDonald's because she wanted a coffee. And? and she got not just 190 90 degree Fahrenheit coffee, but she also got three degree burns Whoa. when it spilled on her. That's great value for you, $2.50. Oh, I think it's wonderful. You were $3.50. $3.50. Oh, oh. oh. It, it's a oh. phone. Okay, we'll ignore that phone. Off. That's one tell. Well, no. uh, so, now. Uh, sorry, so, so, so Stella rocks so, up to this. What does she do? She rock up she to the drive She went up to the drive through yeah, yeah. and then literally they handed her a coffee. It was too hot. So it spilt on her and lap. It, and yeah. she spilt it on her lap. Right. And mm. because she was 79 years of age, it went straight through, gave her three degree burns in two seconds flat. Yeah, but look, it, coffee's hot. You know, it's going to happen. They must make, what, a million cups of coffee worldwide at McDonald's. Yeah. Well, McDonald's. They must make huge made numbers of coffee. They make seven million out of coffee in two days at right. this restaurant. Well, okay, so it, it's, look, it, it, let's assume that it was Stella's fault. They shouldn't have to pay anything. Well, well, what would happen? I mean, she's but, just. But why, why should she? Why? Why? What is the norm for the temperature of coffee? But no idea. And they were able to Well, it show tastes better, it, actually about 80 degrees centigrade, whatever that is. Which turns out to be 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was, they were serving it deliberately too hot or, or with full knowledge was that it was too full, hot? F full knowledge that it was too hot. And no. they'd had 700 other times that people had got burnt by their coffee. Ooh, that's so they. Ooh, they should have known that they could times. hurt people. How many times mm. do you have to know that your coffee's hot? Seven hundred well, times. Hey, don't you like a good hot right. coffee? So did Stella get any money out of this? Ah, um, Stella sued, and Stella got two point seven million, which is why we know that's how much it was selling in coffee in two days at this restaurant. Wow. Because they gave that. Hang on, did you just call McDonald's a restaurant? Yeah, well, we will do He doesn't that. eat out much. Fast food. Now, what was the consequence, though, is that ultimately they still had to spend, on appeal, $480,000 in compensation, plus lawyers' fees, plus her lawyers' fees. So this so is... Yeah, they... The last bit is... Small cost, how much is the cup of coffee? Mm. Cup of coffee? Hang on, so okay, the cup of coffee might be $4.50, but in order to make the decision, in, in, from a managerial perspective, s reduce the temperature of our coffee, that wouldn't, that might cost what, whatever it goes through the board of directors, fraction. it would be a fraction of $480,000. And I mean, I, I, I think. But it, notice. Our previous example showed large consequences, huge mega consequences, flow on effects, but here, small cost, large consequences. Mm, okay. So, let's, th why do we study business law? Because every business decision has a legal consequence. 
And what we're going to do in this course and the subsequent videos is we're going to look at negligence. Which is what happened with Stella, that's yeah, right. That's yeah. right. Well, that's okay. what happened with Stella. And she had a contract. She bought a cup of coffee, coffee. that's a contract. That Even though it's like $2.50, it's still a contract. Exactly. And so she didn't write it out, it doesn't matter. No. It can be verbal. Verbal, and it can be just evidenced by the receipt. So, okay. we're going Consumed to look at... protection, yeah. So, she, when she sued, she could also, in Australia, sue under the consumer protection legislation as well. She yeah. could, yeah. And right. she would have had a good time there too. <laughs> now, business structures. Yep. Who does she sue? Does she sue McDonald's International? Does she sue McDonald's, the local firm? Does she sue the partnership or the company that runs the little... Or the, the, or the, the actual um, or McDonald's the employee that served the drink? Or the okay. person. All right, so we look at business structures, yep. And what about the directors that run McDonald's? Are they going to be liable for this? Wow. Should they be liable? Hmm, okay. So, so these, are examine all the all these, things. Right. these are all the inquiries that we will do in this course. And the aim behind all this is to make you um, realise that every business decision has a legal consequence. Because we will say, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Thank you. Okay, thank you.